Damien Ferry here reporting live for the Unshackled at a very important event called Straight Lives Matter. Now, um, we have multiple speakers speaking at the V event. We've got John Bolton, also a, um, a Baptist minister that's going to be speaking, Toby Cook and Nick Folks, and Kat Clayton. Now, this is a very important matter. We're here at Green Park in Darlinghurst, and it's all in reference to the same-sex marriage plebiscite that we've got coming up. Now, this isn't about marriage at all. Now, gay people have the same equalities as everybody else. And if there was minor things that could be adjusted in a civil union ship, they could do that, but they choose not to because there's an agenda behind it, see? An agenda to destroy the family unit and they're using same-sex marriage as a way of basically a proxy for many more things to come. Now I have questioned a lot of people about this one issue. A lot of progressive people on the internet, on Facebook, and I say to them, the definition of progressivism, to be a progressive person is wanting continual change. So if you want continual change, you can't then say, after SSM, no, no, we'll be all right and there's nothing else to come because that is a lie against what you believe in, what your ideology teaches. You have to be for continual change. So after SSM, what else will be heading down the path? You're going to have polygamy. A lot of people already on the internet say that polygamy should be legal because love is love, right? There shouldn't be any discrimination. You've already got a small population of the gay community pushing uh, for pedophilia to be an orientation rather than a actual crime. So soon enough, you're going to be able to have adults with children, which already happens in many other countries around the world. It's going to happen here, and you can't criticize that. You can't criticize it because it's, it's discriminating, right? You're going to have bestiality down the line as well further down the track, this is all going to happen. All you have to do is look overseas and see exactly what has happened. First, they take away your religious freedoms, so ministers are going to be forced to do same-sex weddings, photographers and also other people like uh, bakers and whatever else are going to be able to have to be forced to do what's according, going right against the beliefs, they're going to be forced to uh, basically provide their services, so that takes away freedom of association. You've got freedom of religion gone, even though Shorten lies about it, he contradicts himself. One minute he says he's, he's for it, for the protecting the freedoms, the next minute he's, he's saying, no, 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 we have to get rid of them. The Greens already support getting rid of them, and he only follows what they say. Freedom of association gone. Freedom of speech, we've already seen all the violence and, and outbursts from the Yes camp, and only from the Yes camp. The no camp have been very, very principled, very professional in how they've addressed their case. And we're winning a lot of votes because of it. A lot of people are fed up. A lot of people are saying, you know what? I was undecided on the issue, now I'm decided. I can't stand seeing people getting shouted down for having a different view. People have a right to express their opinion in society. <laughs>
one who's stretching it in. Ah, uh, he walked off. Oh, did he? Not me. Did you tell Frenchie? Yeah, yeah, Frenchie. Why are you worried about us in the bedroom anyway? We're not worried about you guys. Straight lives matter. And the campaign to redefine marriage is part of the broader gay rights agenda to smash what constitutes traditional family unit, reshape societal and sexual norms and desecrate Christian morals and disrespect its heritage. Traditional marriage is the bedrock of a successful and lasting society. However, the LGBT lobby and its activists wanted to redefine marriage to suit a sexual orientation that is in the minority. The push for normalising and legalising gay marriage is cultural terrorism and must be resisted to preserve the natural and fundamental family unit. We are here today to encourage our fellow Australians to vote no for same-sex marriage. It is just not okay to vote no, it is the right thing to do. We have witnessed the rotten behaviour perpetrated by Yes campaigners over the far past few weeks. And the Marriage Act has not even been amended yet. Just imagine the terror and intimidation if the yes vote wins this very important marriage law postal survey that has been sent out to enrolled Australian voters. We are told by gay lobby groups, the mainstream media, celebrities, politicians, that marriage equality is a human right that belongs to everyone and Australia is behind the times in not legalising it. In fact, we are ahead of the times in resisting the changes to an age-old institution that is not broken. As the proverb goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Australia is often compared with other decadent and morally bankrupt Western nations with criticism and ridicule for holding out against gay marriage. But when you consider only 23 out of the 209 countries in the world have legalised same-sex unions, we are in the majority. Militant gay activists tell supporters of traditional marriage, we have no right to tell others how to live their lives. But we know that the gay marriage is not solely about gay marriage, it represents much, much more. There are consequences to amending the Marriage Act. The gay marriage movement has moved from tolerance to totalitarianism, that's what it is over there. The bigots over there are the most blinded, they talk about us being bigots, but what we see all the time since the postal survey has started is just the intimidation and the harassment. That's totalitarianism. They call us fascists? Well, I reckon totalitarianism is way worse. We saw what happened in the Soviet Union with homosexuals. They were taken to the gulags and they fly the red flag. And if the same-sex marriage is legalised, freedom of religion will be challenged. New anti-discrimination statutes will become law. Freedom of speech will be restricted. Service providers like bakers, photographers, marriage celebrants, and doctors will be forced to conduct business for same-sex couples against their religious or moral beliefs. It will become a crime to deny service to same-sex couples. More radical sex education programs like Safe Schools will be introduced into our schools, teaching more confusing gender fluid theory and promote hem homosexuality as an equal to heterosexuality. Homosexuality is a sexual orientation, however it is not equal to heterosexuality because two men or two women together cannot procreate. And what about the rights of children to a mother and a father? Is the child ever asked if he or she wants to live in an arrangement void of a mother or a father? We are privileged today to have a lineup of um, guest speakers who will give you their unique perspective on why legalising gay marriage is wrong and a danger to society. Our first speaker today is John Bolton. I started off by saying it's not hate speech to disagree with the extremist lesbian Senator Penny Wong. Before the last election, she came out and said that she agreed that marriage was between a man and a woman specially reserved for that. Now she's changed her mind. She said, trust her, Marriage is between a man and a woman, now she's changed her mind. She says, trust her to make sure that they don't teach bad things to children if the yes vote succeeds. How can you trust these people when they're constantly just lying to us? What about Christopher Pine? Now, Christopher Pine, if you're gay, come out and tell us that you're gay. There is no shame in that. 
The shame is being a hypocrite and campaigning for the yes side of things while pretending that you're not gay, if you are. How can we trust these people when you can't even trust Christopher Pine to come out? They're all saying how proud they are all the time, yet they're constantly whinging and complaining. There's less than 1% of them in Australia. It is 0.87% of Australians who actually live in a de facto homosexual relationship, and yet they're constantly telling the rest of us what to do. I object to that. Stop telling me what to do. Stop telling me what to say. Stop telling me what to think. And stop telling our children what to think about homosexuality as well. There are some things that homosexuals can't do. Getting married is one of them. Having children is one of them. The extremist lesbian, Senator Penny Wong, can go to bed as many times as she likes with her lesbian partner, and they will never need to practice safe sex because they can't have children. Now, facts are not offensive. That's not offensive. It is just a fact. And they need to get over telling the rest of us that we have to believe what they believe. In Canada right now, it is a criminal offence not to use Z and Zer for people who say they're not a man and a woman. They've just made that a criminal offence. That's what follows when you legalise gay marriage. In Ireland, where gay marriage has been legalised, an Islamic immigrant has just brought his second wife in. Didn't get rid of the first one, but because they now have same-sex marriage and have changed the marriage law in Ireland, a Lebanese immigrant is entitled to bring in his second wife under the family reunification scheme. These are the things which follow, and we haven't been told how we're going to deal with that here in Australia. There is no end for what the left wing want. The Australian Army, the Australian Army, our own army, has just banned taking on men recruits for a year. For the next year, the Australian Army cannot take on a male recruit. This is the sort of thing that the left wing constantly uh, bringing in. Marriage is an important social structure. It has a function, it has a structure, it served as well. That's why we as an Australian society, the 98% of us who are not gay, are entitled to have a say about what marriage is. It is not just about two people, it's about the whole of our society structure. When you see what the social anthropologists Levi Strauss and Radcliffe Brown say about the structures and functions of marriage, it is between a man and a woman and it is a rite of passage and and it is to do with the whole of society, not just the two people involved. And it's about Australian society. A marriage needs more support, not less. We need to strengthen the structure of what marriage is. These people, have, they've derailed a plebiscite already. They say Parliament should act. Well, our Parliament did act under the Howard government. For the first time in our history, the Howard government actually felt it necessary to write into the Marriage Act what marriage is. So when these leftists complain that the Parliament should take action, well, the Parliament has taken action. And in Australia, 22 times Australian society has said no to homosexual marriage, and we yeah. will continue to say no to homosexual marriage. From primary schools to universities, this radical queer ideology takes over once marriage is broken. Homosexual marriage is just the battering ram for breaking down our values as a conservative Western society. In Canada, after homosexual marriage was made lawful, law graduates now who qualify as lawyers are not being admitted because they went to a law school where they did not teach radical homosexual ideology. In London, a primary school is being deregistered because it will not teach the equivalent of safe school homosexual ideology, so they're going to deregister the school. These people care so much about us, they use violence to enforce their views. I wasn't going to come here. But what happened to the students at the Sydney University when 15 of them put up with three or four hours of, a, of violent abuse and when they didn't react, 
Their leader was wise enough to say, we're here to show it's okay to vote no, but we're not going to react to the violence of the left-wingers who are taunting us for hours, and so he kept them all calm. So what did they do? They attacked, they tore down their structures, they overturned their tables, they threw food at them, and they physically assaulted them. This is the loving, caring, left-wing homosexual group that want you to say yes. That's how they deal with things. This has now become as much about free speech as anything. I may not agree with what Nick Folk says. I may not agree with what other speakers say today, but I will bloody well stand up for their right to say it in public in Australia without being assaulted. There is no doubt that facts are not biased, facts are not offensive, and facts are not hurtful. And it is a fact that children brought up with their two natural parents, with a man and woman in the home, do better than in any other circumstances. That is what's best. That's why humans have thrived for thousands of years. In every analysis of every society anywhere in the world, we have always had a right of marriage where a man and a woman marry with the expectation that that will be the family unit that brings up children. These people want to tell me what words to use when I can say them. They say it's offensive. That poor girl in Canberra that got the sack for just going on Facebook and saying it's okay to vote no. Her boss said that's hate speech. Actually saying no and disagreeing is hate speech according to these lefties. I oppose that. I say the best argument is to stick with heterosexual marriage, a man and a woman. And that's part of who we are as a society. These people will never give up and we have to never stop resisting them. Who believes in freedom of speech? Hands up. Who believes in freedom of speech? To the rabble behind us, do you believe in freedom of speech? Hands up. Do you believe in freedom of speech? No, they don't. They don't believe in freedom of speech, unless it's their freedom of speech that you're talking about. Of course, freedom of speech itself is freedom itself. If you don't have the right to speak the truth, Everything that's going to be talked about is all going to be based on a pack of lies. And of course, freedom of speech has been compromised in the, the case at the moment. Someone puts their head up to say no, they want to have a point out there. Uh, no, it gets hit on the head. We see Dr Pansy lie. The call for her to be deregistered. The ability to earn an income is a person's most valuable asset. So the rabble behind us, Please explain why someone should be penalised of their most precious asset, the ability to earn an income, because of their views. And I'd expect this from the old Nazis. Uh, as it is, their tactics behind, they behave like brown shirts, don't they? The old Nazi brown shirts, it's exactly the same. Isolated incidents of thuggery, shouting down free speech, not acceptable. And of course, the example of Prime Minister Abbott having his... Um, lip uh, bloodied. Oh, that has uh, totally unheard of, isn't it? I want to talk about the hidden agenda of same-sex marriage and the consequences of same-sex marriage, SSM, for society, for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community and for God. What does God have to do with this, people might ask. Well, let's start off with an important idea. When someone is selling a lie or selling an uncomfortable idea, the deceiving speaker has two reasons in mind. The first reason is the given reason, which sounds fair and good, such as same-sex marriage is loving and promotes marriage equality and people think oh isn't that wonderful that sounds beautiful oh how nice but then there is the real reason in the speaker's mind which if the real reason was announced would immediately be rejected as dangerous evil and not in our interests and the real reasons behind this same-sex marriage agenda is that same-sex marriage is a tool of the elites of this world to erode our freedoms of speech 
freedoms of religion, freedoms of parenting, freedom to protest, freedom of adoption, until these elites control every area of our life. Amen? Same-sex marriage is a trick, is a trick, a dirty trick to steal these freedoms from us. Do not be a same SSM sucker. Do not be an SSM sucker. There are some suckers in this world who swallow anything that comes their way. And the SSM crowd have swallowed a lie, a dangerous, evil lie. And they will live to regret it if it gets through. So we must ask a question. What are the short-term and long-term consequences of SSM? If you do not know the short-term and long-term consequences, then you must vote no. And do not throw away your freedoms to some corrupt government. You never buy a car unless you've driven it, test-driven it first. This disaster of SSM has immense problems for every layer of society in now and into the future. You cannot trust ungodly governments to always do the right thing for you. <laughs> That's for sure. They will mostly do what they think will keep themselves in power and they will be quite happy to vote yes if it keeps themselves in power. Isaiah 10, 1, woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. That means there's a curse on governments who decree unrighteous decrees. Why will the Labor Party and the Liberal Party not first tell us how they intend to guarantee our freedoms of speech our freedoms of religion, our freedoms of protest if SSM is legalised. Why won't they first tell us how they guarantee our freedoms? Why won't they? It's because they have no intention of guaranteeing our freedoms of speech, religion or protest. No intention. No intention. Shame. So what are the short-term and long-term consequences of legalising same-sex marriage? Number one, SSM is total uprooting of traditional father-mother parenting. It will legally erase biological parenting. Parental rights will be taken by big government. Why should homosexual rights supersede children's rights to a mum and a dad. Okay? Kids matter m more than the homosexual right to marriage. Children of SSM are discriminated against. Children of SSM are disadvantaged by missing a biological parent. You ask some of them. You ask them, sister. Okay? You ask them. How many do you know like that? None. You ask them. Number two. Consequence. Number one. You will leave, lose your freedom to protest this and many other government mandated issues. It will be called discrimination to say that marriage is between a man and a woman. It will be called discrimination to say that every child should be raised by his biological father and mother. New hate speech laws and anti-discrimination laws will be introduced where you can be prosecuted for voicing a different opinion. Your legal fees and penalties will be over $100,000 just to defend yourself against such accusations of discrimination. That is a shame and a disgrace. You will also risk losing your professional license if you express a different opinion 
such as the same-sex marriage attempt to deregister a Chinese doctor for opposing SSM. You risk losing your job, especially if you're a government employee. You risk losing your business, especially if you're a baker. You risk losing your children if you criticise government legalised SSM. Canadian schools put homosexual same-sex marriage into all subjects and into all grades of school. That is not education, that is brainwashing with an evil agenda. Christians have to tolerate all the garbage that's thrown at us, but SSM won't tolerate us. Third consequence, same-sex marriage has been planned by the bullying unsafe schools advocates. Once same-sex marriage is legalised, it will be a guaranteed green light for them to brainwash, abuse and confuse your children with 200 plus gender identities. Something which should never be allowed in the schools to attack and hurt and abuse children. Parents can expect state interference when it comes to teaching moral values to their children. Government will have access into your home to judge your suitability as a parent. If the government does not like what you are teaching your children, they will attempt to remove your children. If same-sex marriage laws are introduced, then gender-neutral language will be legalised and mandated. It will be discrimination for you to assume someone is male or female, regardless of their genitalia. Gender-neutral pronouns such as Z must be uniformly applied or you get someone's anger. Politicians will attempt to out-radical one another to become the next trans rights champion. Most faith charities will either close down or become politically correct to avoid fines and loss of charitable status. Vote yes if you want more of your freedoms taken away by big government and if you want to be controlled by others. Who in their right mind would want more of their freedoms taken away by big government? Can you trust big government to do the right thing by you? Wake up to yourself. It, you cannot trust big government. They've got crooks. They're out to further their own agenda. Wake up young person, get a bit of experience and learn from the mistakes of previous generations, okay? I'm an old man, I've seen what's happening, I know what I'm talking about. Vote no if you want to preserve your freedoms and your way of life. Same-sex marriage consequences for society are number one, religious freedoms will be lost, church's tax-free status will be attacked, Number two, individual freedom of expression will be lost. And thirdly, same-sex marriage will be compulsorily taught to your children, grandchildren in state schools, and you will not be able to stop it. After legalising same-sex marriage in the UK, number one, practising Christians, Jews, Muslims and Sikhs can no longer adopt children. Whoa, never thought of that happening, did they? Number two, the National Trust joined the bullying LGBT campaign by compelling 62,000 volunteers to wear the SSM rainbow badge. Number three, Richard Page was fired for saying that children might enjoy better outcomes if they were adopted by heterosexual couples. Lost his job just for one sentence. In the UK, same-sex marriage was promoted at, as tolerance and equality, but same-sex marriage produced the most intolerant, most unequal outcomes of any political issue. Same-sex marriage brings conflict. It brings conflict between laws of the state and the laws of all religions. 100%. Conflict between laws of state and laws of all religions. 
Same-sex marriage purpose is to introduce the bullying, sodomite, safe schools agenda into all schools at all grades. That's their agenda. It is designed to stop the Christian opposition to the global elite's one world control agenda. It attacks our freedoms, it attacks our peace, it attacks our businesses, it attacks our schools, it attacks our reality perception. It causes fear, it causes hate, it causes division as we see today. Division when there need not to be division. Why can't we be a united society? and get along without instigating a conflict and division. Nobody is born gay, just as nobody is born a bank robber, a drug dealer or a terrorist. Resist the temptation for homosexuality. They have never found a gay gene. Never found a gay gene. Never. Now, God says that legalised same-sex marriage is an abomination that defiles, destroys and vomits out a population. It is very bad for individuals to commit homosexuality and abortion, but when governments legalise these sins, big trouble is coming. In Leviticus 18, God warned Israel not to follow the ordinances of the Canaanites who lived in the land. After the doings of the land of Canaan, where I bring you, shall ye not do, neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ordinance means an enactment, a statute, a law. The judgment comes because iniquity is an ordinance of the society and not because individuals commit iniquity. When a society makes iniquity and same-sex marriage an ordinance, this is extremely serious with God. In Leviticus 18, the Bible defines iniquity as adultery, child sacrifice, homosexuality, bestiality. God strongly condemns this as an abomination. Now, it says, God says, Defile ye not yourselves in any of these, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. The land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomits out her inhabitants. What does that mean for the land to vomit out the inhabitants? You've never seen that happen before, have you? You study history. It's in history. It's happened before. We have a lot to thank God for, for our freedoms and our peace in Australia for 230-odd years. Don't mess it up by upsetting God or offending God. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, the land is defiled. God will judge nations who legalise same-sex marriage. I'll give you five examples. Number one, the pre-flood world was judged. Every imagination, the heart of man was evil continually. Number two, Sodom and Gomorrah are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire, Jude 7. Pompeii, you ever heard of Pompeii? Pompeii? The homosexual and prostitution capital of the Roman Empire was destroyed by Mount Vesuvius erupting on 24th of August 79 AD, sending 170 kilometre per hour, 800 degrees centigrade molten lava, killing 25,000 people in 24 hours. Pompeii had at least 41 brothels. Pornography was on every street and in most buildings. The eruption occurred just after they celebrated the Fire God Festival to Vulcanalia. The temperature was at least 250 degrees centigrade for 16 kilometre radius around Mount Vesuvius. They worshipped the phallic god as well. Number four, New Orleans in the United States was destroyed by Hurricane Katrina on Saturday 30th of August 2005, the very day of the 33rd homosexual gay Mardi Gras. The very day? What's the probability of that happening? Goodness gracious, that's pushing the odds a bit, isn't it? The timing was shocking. I think the homosexual Mardi Gras had to be cancelled that day. And also, there's Port Royal in Jamaica, was destroyed by an earthquake, 7th of June, 1692. Once known as the wickedest city on the earth for its concentration of pirates, prostitutes and rum. In minutes, a massive earthquake sent 33 acres of the city, buildings, streets, houses, contents, occupants into Kingston Harbour. 
we can, you can be 100% sure that God sees legalising same-sex marriage as an abomination that he will judge Australia for. My dear friends, some very bad things will happen to Australia if the government crosses the red line by legalising same-sex marriage. Australia will vomit out her inhabitants for legalising same-sex marriage. How can this be? Well, Atheists, same-sex marriage advocates, would, should study the Bible prophecies being fulfilled today and the events following them. Daniel foretold the exact year, month, day and hour that Jesus entered Jerusalem as 3 p.m. 29th of March, 33 AD. Daniel foretold there will be a time of trouble such as never once since there was a nation, Daniel 12.1. Jesus foretold the destruction of Jerusalem, the temple, the escape, the captivity and Israel losing control of Jerusalem until the end of the age in Matthew 24, 2 and Luke 22, 20. Six correct prophecies. Says, Fire comes on those who dwell carelessly in the aisles. Who could that be talking about, folks? Those who dwell carelessly in the aisles. That sounds like New Zealand, England, Ireland, Australia, four main nations, island nations, who are endorsing same-sex marriage. This leads, this fire, this leads, what could this fire be? I wonder what this fire could be that comes on those who dwell carelessly in the isles. Maybe we should ask Kim Jong-un if he has any idea what this is talking about. This fire leads to 25% of the world population being killed in Revelation 6. What fire might do this, I wonder? After this disaster, a 200 million man army comes from the east, killing another 33% of the world in Revelation 9. Who, which nation could assemble 200 million man army? I wonder. If you've got any ideas, please tell me later on. Now, another surprising prophecy is that Antichrist armies only take half of Jerusalem, Zechariah 14.2. Why do they only take half of Jerusalem? It's to implement the two-state solution, which has East Jerusalem as the capital of a Palestinian state and West Jerusalem as the capital of a Jewish state. Antichrist sounds like a homosexual, neither shall he regard the desire of women. Jerusalem's lesbian gay community 25,000 gay march, which spiritually is called Sodom. And how does a person become a same-sex marriage advocate? Well, first of all, he believes in evolu evolution. Then he rejects God, the Bible, creation, and accountability to God. If he thinks there's no God that he's accountable to, then he loses his moral compass and anything becomes okay. Now, if you think evolution created life, ask any university professor to synthesize and manufacture in the laboratory DNA, RNA, or other complex molecules found in nature. He cannot. No scientist can produce these by design in a lab, so how can they evolve by accident in the real world? They never will. Cut open an apple, it goes brown. Why? Because oxygen breaks down the molecules. So oxygen would stop evolution getting past the amino acid stage so that no DNA and no life would ever form. How does evolution create self-consciousness in life? No one knows. It never did. If the Earth was five billion years old, you'd have a million times more salt in the seas, a million times more helium in the air, a million times more meteorite dust on the Earth. 200 plus flood legends disprove evolution and prove the Bible. Your computer will never work without software, nor will life evolve without God programming in the software. If you believe in evolution, you've been miseducated by teachers ignorant of so much evidence for creation. If you believe in same-sex marriage, you've been miseducated by ignorant teachers lying to you. Wake up and throw same-sex marriage idea in the rubbish tin before the same-sex marriage crowd throws your freedoms in the rubbish tin. Do not do the same-sex marriage experiment. The results will be so bad that you will wish you've never voted yes. The government is asking us to buy same-sex marriage without first testing it. Government has no right to change the divine foundational institute of marriage. Vote no.